What do you get when you mix a health coach and a wellness coach mixed with a lot of curiosity? You get two people who ask a lot of questions about health and wellness. Today we ask, is being a people pleaser a bad thing? We all want to be liked and we want people to be pleased with us. But when this goes to the extreme, how does it affect us? What toll does it take on our body? So let's get started as we ask, wait, what? Hi, Leah. Hi, Kamna. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. I feel like I haven't talked to you in a long time. I know. We haven't recorded in a while, I don't think. Yeah. Feels weird. Of weeks. <laughs> yeah. It does feel weird. Which actually is beneficial for me because that means I got my call. I had plenty of time to get my call to action in. So there was oh, no okay. excuse. Remind me. me what it was? It was just to exercise like two or three times a week. Like, like get my heart rate up exercise. It was two times or one time? Did it, was it just one? I did it two to three. Oh, excellent. Yeah. You're, you're an and I achiever. really went above and beyond. So that's, I'm proud of that. But no, it was really just to get back to that. And I, I mean, honestly, I've been doing good. I've even been doing um, weights a couple times a week too. Wow. Yeah. I mean, look at my arms. Can't you tell? No, <laughs> not at all. So what, what was the switch? No, there's not a switch. It's it's not. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. I'm still forcing myself to do it. It's just, I know I need to do it for my health. So yeah. I'm doing it. Okay. And it, and the weather's getting better. So that's very helpful. Do you do it outside? Yeah. I've been going for a walk or a bike. Oh, ride. very nice. Oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. I so I, I mean, that's very helpful. Yes, it is. The weather and the sunshine make you mm -hmm. just more energized for sure. Yep. So yeah, that's mine. It's done. It's great. Um, and my son got a workout bench. Oh, he did? Yeah. So we're all using it. Well, just me and my daughter. We're working on it. We're doing like um, circuits where one of us does the weights and one of us does something else. And one of us does something else. And then we switch. Oh, so, wow. And we're trying to do that a couple of times a week too. So that's so good. Yeah. You're going to be, okay. you're going to be buff by the time. I hope comes so. Down. I just <laughs> want to be strong so bad. Yeah. I'm so not strong. So I will tell you, I was only lifting the bar, which I don't know how much the bar is. It's have... like 10, 15 pounds. I don't know. It's pretty good. I think it's eight to 10 maybe. Okay. And it was really hard. And now I'm up to five on each. So 10. Wow. I know. Look at me go. I'm so proud of myself. That's amazing. So yeah, we're going to keep going with it. I love it. How about you? What was your call to action? My call to action was to do one day of yoga a week. And I did it twice. Uh, and the first time I did it, you know, I twice had this, in one week, twice in the two weeks that, okay. Okay. Since we've recorded, but the one, the first time I did it, I was, I have this notion that, um, yoga is not a workout. Oh my gosh. You and first my sister. One, yeah. Go I know. On. The first one I did, I was actually sweating and it was difficult. And I, by the second one, I'm like, I think my goal for this yoga, I'm going to keep, keep doing it one day a week, but my goal should be to progress my flexibility because I am not at all flexible at all. Really? cannot touch my toes. I cannot do the things without bending my knees. I, I need to work on my flexibility. I'm, that's a goal of mine. So, which I believe, doesn't that help your balance too? If you work on your yes. flexibility? Yes. Okay. Your core, everything, stability. So do you enjoy it? It's not bad. I didn't pick a very long one. Cause I don't want to be like, Oh my okay. God, this is so hard. Yeah. But 20, 25 minutes and it's good. I use the Peloton app. They have a bunch of yoga classes. They have great yoga and Pilates on there. Yeah. So I, I like it. And I think I'm going to really like figure out a way to measure my flexibility. You'll know. I don't, you don't need to figure out a way. You'll know when you start getting, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I can do a downward dog and my heels touch the floor. Yes. Like you'll just know. Yes. You'll just feel it. You know what I mean? Yes. Or you can stand on one leg and not fall over. Yeah. Right. Yes. You'll just feel it for sure. So I'm, I'm actually excited to put that. You look like, excited about it. I'm yeah. I want to do it. I think uh, having a purpose in the process has helpful 
to know why I'm doing so it. So your purpose is like to get your mobile, your flexibility more. Yes. And I want to do it before it's a, oh boy, you really need to do it. By the way, that's interesting. You said what you said, like, I, you think help finding your purpose for it has been helpful. Maybe some of us need to find their purpose in why we're doing something. Yes. Like you said, you want to work out because you want to get stronger. Right. That's a, that's a good purpose instead of, oh gosh, I have to pass these 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. It's so awful. But you're like, no, I can lift more weight. And you have a metric of how do you measure that? Yeah. I like that you have a purpose for it. Like what's your purpose for walking? What's your purpose for exercising? Like we need a purpose. Outside of losing weight. And outside of just doing it for your health, because that those aren't two things that really motivate people sometimes. They're I just not. I totally agree. I agree. It totally. needs to be something different. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. All right. I got it. I like it. <laughs> Good for you. Thank um, you. It's my turn to do things I like, right? Yes. I can't All wait. Right. So I was, I, I, it's a person. Oh, I know. I don't even know if you know who this person is. His name is Bobby Paris. No, I don't know. I wonder if I'm saying his name right. I really, really, really hope I am because I asked him to be on our podcast already. Um, I messaged him. I'm like, I watch you on our podcast. Anyway, he's kind of like the Yucca app. Okay. Okay. And if you remember the Yucca app, you scan your food and it tells you if it's good for you or not good for you. Right. He is, he has his own app that is 100% free and it's like Bobby approved. And I didn't put the app on it for a while because I'm so, I just feel like I don't want another damn app in my life, but yeah. I finally broke down and I got his app. Um, but what I do like about him is he's on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, and he does videos mm -hmm. and he goes to Costco. He goes to Aldi's, he goes to these stores and he goes through and he grabs something off the shelf and he says, this is the best deal for your money. This is the best. Like, and, but he tells you why it is. Oh. Like he really goes into it and he's like, or else he'll be like, get this instead of this. And he'll hold the products up. You know, I love visual learners. Like, and sometimes yeah. I want to see what that package looks like. And then Absolutely. I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. So, um. The, and he's just got a lot of videos. They're really short. They're not long, but they're really interesting. So his name is Bobby Parrish. P is in Paul, A-R-R-I-S-H. He's on all of the sites. But I will tell you this. He's really strict. What do you mean? Like a lot of the food I scan is approved on the Yucca, but not Bobby approved. He's real. He does not like any seed oils at all, like at all. And if there's a seed oil in it, it's not approved. And a seed oil, just to clarify, would be like a canola, like, um, vegetable, like, corn, soy. Yeah, like gra uh, grape seed, cotton seed, um, rape seed, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of those. Like he's yeah, pretty intense with that. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because my mom was scanning uh, the Seven Sundays cereal. It's, but it's like a granola. It's a new one. It's very good. But she was scanning it and she's like, oh, it's not good on the Yucca app. And I thought, and I was like, but all the ingredients are fantastic. Yeah. And I think it's because it's high in fat from the almonds and the coconut. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about that when you were saying it is that we really need to be like not trusting anything blindly. We have to understand mm -hmm. why maybe it didn't come up good on the Yucca app or why is this guy saying don't have seed oils or, mm -hmm. you know, we need, really need to understand. And so yeah, and he, he also has it. I like his app actually a lot better than the um, Yucca app because he does by aisle, like it's sorted by aisle. Like you can just oh, wow. go on it and pull it up um, by brand and he does it by stores. And then um like he literally says like what it is, like when you scan a food, it highlights what it is immediately. And he, and, but his videos are actually what I like more than the app. His videos are really, really good. Like he just really breaks it down for you and tells you what it is and why. Um, he also hates olive oil in plastic bottles. He's oh. like, I love the Costco bottle. I love the quality of the Costco olive oil because it's one source and he shows you that on there and he's like, but I don't like the plastic. 
but I guess it's better than others. So like he does that right. too. You know what I mean? Right. But, and I went, oh my God, I never thought of that. Why am I buying olive oil in a plastic container? Right. Right? Yeah. A lot of those come in. Because it's not good yeah. for you at all. The plastic container is not good for you. So I was like, okay, there's a switch I can make. So anyway, but I really, really like him. And I just think that he's fun and he's somebody that I would love to get on the podcast and really, he, I went down a whole rabbit hole on seed oils after watching him. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I guess anyway. that's going to be another topic. Bobby Parrish and okay. his daughter is adorable. He's got a cute little girl and she's in a lot of his videos and he's got recipes and all kinds of stuff. So I wrote his name down. I'm going to look him up after we look him up, finish. look him up and watch some of his videos. So anyway, before, before we get into the topic, I have an, uh, I need an update from you. You've oh. been doing this, uh, elimination of butter and chicken mm -hmm. and all dairy. Oh, all dairy. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? It was all dairy. Um, I know I really, really only noticed a difference in my itchiness of my head, but more, I did feel thinner when I was really, really being clean dairy. So what mm -hmm. I'm doing is I'm not doing dairy unless it's like, I'm not as strict at all, mm -hmm. but I don't think that that was the full culprit to what's going on with my scalp yet. So I'm trying okay. right now to go gluten-free, but. That's a lot harder than the dairy for me. I agree. Well, for me, it's opposite, but I think both are hard. Yeah. So I'm struggling with that a little bit. Um, I haven't even made it. Well, I've made it three days as of, as of this record, which is a record. Okay. So, with the gluten? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which is a record right now. So we'll see. You know, uh, yesterday I had a coffee shake. Delicious. But it was mm. milk. I had the worst, like hot, not hot flashes. I was so hot last night. I couldn't sleep from the, oh, I the... was so, so hot. Like it was burning up from inside. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I don't notice anything like that with dairy. I don't, yeah. I just notice um, more itchiness. Um, but I don't, luckily I don't have any other symptoms with the dairy. Okay. The good. Yeah. I'm glad I'm, glad with that so it's just something that but it didn't go away I did notice a difference mm -hmm. but it wasn't but I'm going to be honest with you I love dairy too much that I didn't notice a significant difference do you know what I'm saying yeah I think and it takes I, a while yeah and as I think back I think a lot of my itchiness that I got was from eating pizza which I was attributing to the dairy but maybe it was the gluten mm hmm do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I think when they tell you to do an elimination diet, uh, they ask you to remove all the, the main five triggers and then reintroduce them one at a time. So you can mm -hmm. really figure it out. Yeah. It's, it's hard though, to do all of them. Um, yeah. I'm not ready to do all five yet. So I'm just going to right now, try the, this and see what happens. Yeah. It's fascinating though. I know Whatever it's something I'm better. eating. I yeah. know it's something I'm eating. I know it. I just can't figure it out. I don't know. Right. But anyway. Well, but thanks for the update. update. Yeah. Nothing too exciting to share, but. It's a process. For sure. So, well, what's going on this week? What's our topic? People pleasers. Oh, that's right. I'm, as I'm looking at my notes and going, what did I write? People pleasers. Before we move on, are you a people pleaser? I think I used to be 100%. And I have worked a lot on having my own voice and doing what I like. Okay. How about you? I, I know what you're going to say already. Wait, but wait, before I, we answer me, wh why do you, why did you stop? I, I think I wasn't happy. And at a certain point, you keep thinking I'm doing all of these things for other people. But where is my happiness in all of this? Mm -hmm. When do I get to have my voice heard or my likes processed or someone says, Oh, she wants to do this. Let's do that. Or okay. she doesn't have time. Let me not ask her or whatever okay. it is. I, I would always overcommit and it's just exhausting that's do you think it has to do with age that you got older 
and you realize that or what do you think like mate did you sit down and realize like i'm just not happy like what when was that switch um for me it was probably about nine ten years ago oh i really did an assessment of my life and what do i want and why how can i be happier how can i really really make myself happy because i wasn't i was angry a lot i was frustrated emotional and I think it's all connected to this topic, honestly. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now you have to tell us. What about you? Well, I don't think I'm a people pleaser. No. I, I knew that. You knew that. I don't. I, I mean, I just don't. I don't think I, I mean, I would do things for people, but I also am not afraid to say no. Right. You know what I mean? And it doesn't bother I me. To envy like, that I envy that. I can't. You. I've got to go to bed, so I can't go. I can't. I, I can't tell you how many PTA meetings I'm like, I'm leaving at seven period. Like, bye. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that's just one example. I don't think I am a people pleaser. I really envy that in you, honestly. Oh, well, thank you. I do think that um, my husband and my son are people pleasers after researching this topic. Really? They don't want to please me, but I'm just saying in general, <laughs> they're people pleasers. <laughs> Okay, what's the definition of a people pleaser? Well, first of all, I want to just point out that I re read on many websites that it is not a formal diagnosis. Right. So right. I think that's important. It's just like what we call each other in like a fun way or whatever. Um, it's just a personality trait, right? Mm -hmm. So what was your definition? A person who consistently strives to please others often sacrificing their own wants or needs in the process. Mm -hmm. I also wrote down um, you somebody that covers up how they really feel. Oh. Wow. And you often feel good after, but it's just a temporary. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, WebMD says these people are considered helpful and kind, and they constantly are making themselves available to others and they can take and that can take an emotional toll mm -hmm. you might you may find that you neglect your own needs because you fear disappointing others when they ask for help mm -hmm. yeah i do i you, mean it do you know what, you said your husband and your son do you think they yeah fit into it's school this yeah both of them at too? school they do that they both want to make they both want everybody to like them and really they really try hard Wow. Whatever they need. I'm sure of it. Both of them. Hmm. They don't say no. Mm -mm. So what are some signs that you're a people pleaser? How would you? Well, know? hard to say no. You yeah, don't want to say true. no. That's like, true. I think there are people that literally are just like, oh, I want to say no, but I can't like mm -hmm. people pleaser. Right. Um, you regularly take on extra work, even if you have no time. Yes. Would you think that's a sign? Hundred percent. Yep. Overcommit to plans, responsibilities, and projects. Mm -hmm. You yes. avoid advocating for your own needs. You yes. say you're fine when you're not fine. That's a that's a phrase of oh oh red flag is I'm fine I'm fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Avoid disagreeing with people. Or voicing an honest opinion. Yes. Right. What yes. what are you what are there some signs do you have? Um agreeing with whoever's in front is in front of you. Mm-hmm. Even if it's that's not your true opinion. Mm-hmm. Apologizing for things that are not your fault. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry you feel bad, or I'm so sorry this happened to you, or I'm so sorry that you're food fell off your plate or you know mm -hmm. like just apologizing yep. mm -hmm. um changing your personality depending on who is around you yeah i that's a people pleaser sign don't you think people 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 pleasers tend to do anything possible to avoid conflict and if, even if this means turning into an extremely different person mm -hmm. um yep. i also wrote down this list I don't remember the website I got it from, but perfectionism, agreeableness, conflict, avoiding, self-sacrificing, dependent, low self-esteem, anxious, helpful, and friendly. 
And I found those last two really interesting. And those are more signs of it yeah. or? Yeah, signs of it. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I think that if you, I mean, I don't, this is hard for me to talk about because I've never been, but I'm assuming if you're a people pleaser, you feel pressure almost like to be friendly and mm -hmm. nice, right? Well, I was reading something that it was super interesting. It says that, um, what did, what did you find? That it's, it's socially and culturally reinforced in families in your workplace and educational systems where, wait, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? So someone will say, oh my God, she's such a good employee. Oh my gosh, you're such a good student. Oh, you're so well-behaved or oh, you're so, you're so helpful. You're so kind. Like so those two for words, helpful and friendly, they become these things, these items of mm. praise that you strive towards and sometimes you sacrifice even what you need because you're mm -hmm. trying to get that praise so mm -hmm. it just becomes reinforced oh you're so quiet and well behaved well that means i don't need to say my opinion oh right good point there good point but I, I find it go ahead no i was just gonna say what i find most interesting about people pleasers is it's almost like they have split, they have a personality disorder, like almost like two different personalities. Like yes. they can be so far a people pleaser and then so far self-loathing or I not a people pleaser with the people that they live with. Do you know what I mean? Like there's totally. Oh yeah. That makes like sense. There are there's some people varieties. that are people pleasers with their friends and they'll do anything for their friends and they'll help them. They'll drop everything and they'll go help them move a couch and then help them move of this. And then they just don't want to let them down and they want them to be so, but then, you know, their, their mom asks them to do something and they're like, eh, I'll do it when I get to it. Do you, I mean, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I think that's a really important point is there can be degrees of being a people pleaser. It's not an all right. or nothing thing. Right. That's, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. I also feel like maybe you can touch on this when you were a people pleaser, did you feel frustrated more often? Oh, yes. I think that's where a lot yeah. of my anger came from. Not being able to voice your own opinion or having people hear you, it just, it becomes debilitating. And you mm. are constantly seeking that praise from other people, so much so that you don't even know who you are or what you like. Mm -hmm. If someone used to ask me, well, what do you want to do? Maybe I can make a plan because that's my role, but I don't necessarily know what I like, or what I want mm -hmm. to do. So, so wait, you, you said something interesting. You said that, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. That's okay. Go on. We're both having moments like that today. We really are today. Jeez. <laughs> but I, I think it's important to also know that people pleasers might have their own opinion, but because they're so used to catering to others or serving others, they almost feel lost when they're by themselves or when they have to do something on their own, mm -hmm. they almost don't know how to do it. That's so true. Really? Yeah. And the people I've known that are like that. Yeah. It's interesting to me. Hmm. So what do you think causes it? This I found fascinating. Okay. You also found some interesting things, right? I did, but I want to hear yours. So um, the causes Primarily what I found was it's a response to trauma and or stress. And okay. it can really happen at any time in your life. Primarily it happens when you're a child, uh, but it's something that you've learned to do. So we are automatically wired to protect ourselves and mm -hmm. pleasing or as a psychological term is fawning okay. is now recognized as one of the four trauma responses. So you have fight or flight and freeze and something called fawning. Really? That's a new uh, F word in the yes. fight, in the trauma world? Yes. So fawning means, what does it mean? Tell me. So fawn types seek safety by merging with the wishes, needs, or demands of others. And it begins mostly outside of our awareness. So it happens almost as a child. Like, I'll give you an example. This is not a great example, but I think I've shared that when I used to be my kids were little, I used to get upset and they would go and clean the house, but like they'd put their toys away and clean up their stuff because they knew that that was a way to please me. 
these are behaviors that we learn from a very young age. If I do this, then the person will be happy. If I behave, the person will do this. If I'm agreeable, that they won't get upset. So we mm-hmm. fawn to create a more peaceful environment. We agree to a lot of things, even if they don't feel good. Inter- yeah. Gosh, it's so funny that some people do that and some people don't do that at all. Yes. You know well, I, mean? I think if, if you don't have the need for that, if your environment is not that, then you won't. Mm-hmm. True. You know, it's just different relationships. I have a friend, she probably, as a child, it was wonderful, but her husband is a little rigid. And I think she does this fawning. She will try to make him happy and she will try to keep the peace. And if she needs to bring up a topic, she'll do it in a, such a way that he's like, he had his favorite meal. And then she brings up the topic. Do you think that that's like a self-preservation type thing though? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like just, I just need to make my life easier right now. I don't feel like doing any, I'm going to fawn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this fawning. What did you Mm -hmm. find about the causes? Causes um, are some pretty much easy ones. Like if you have low self-esteem, I think, Mm -hmm. I think low self-esteem, you feel less than others. So you feel like your needs are not important. Right. Yeah. Um, anxiety, you have anxiety about fitting in or anxiety about rejection or re anxiety about, oh my gosh, I might cause a, I might cause an, I might offend somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those are reasons why you may try and be a people pleaser. Um, afraid of conflict, conflict avoidance. There are some people that are such people pleasers that they don't want to even put a toe in the water to cause a ripple do you know what i mean oh yeah um tr- i wrote in in inequality um like sexism mm-hmm. also is like right so if if you're for the, the example i read was like women are the ones that should come home and do the the dishes do you know mm-hmm. what i mean like or women are more maternal than men. Like one of those type of things is causing that people pleaser. Like you just yeah. believe that, you know? Yes. Uh, yeah, totally agree with that. I also uh, wrote down a few other things of causes. Okay. Which like, so violence from parents or caregiver mm-hmm. or partner, an oh, emotionally yeah. unavailable parent. So you're if they don't really respond to you or your needs, you're always trying to please them. So you're always on a nar- narcissistic parent or partner hmm. and uh, a family that avoids conflict. So if you never, ever talk about the problems, you just feel like you got to keep the peace all the time. A parent who has mental or physical health issues. And that, that I think a is cause. a tough one. Yes. Like so if your parent has bipolar or some other personality disorder or if they have a health issue that's ongoing you're going to want to keep the peace you want to keep things low anxiety and then what Mm -hmm. you said about the sexism and Mm -hmm. discrimination the other thing is um some cultures actually teach that selflessness is a virtue Mm -hmm. So that's a whole thing too. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you're taught that, oh yes, you should be that way, then, then it's really hard to break. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. And it is, especially for, I don't mean to to sound sexist, but it is true for a lot of women. Just be quiet and keep the peace and don't make a big deal and don't fight about this. And he's tired from work. So you don't, don't say anything. And I've heard that a lot in my life. Mm -hmm. Why are you making a big deal? It's okay. Mm -hmm. Let it go. So then of course you're going to be, well, okay. And then be that people pleaser. Yes. No wonder that sometimes we do that. Do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Wow. This is is pretty deep. I wasn't anticipating this to be deep. Yeah. I really wasn't. Well, it is, but I think it's also a little bit out of our scope. So we're we're not qualified to diagnose or tell anybody what to do. We're just exploring the topic because it does have an impact on our health. You're right. You're right. Well, I'm definitely not qualified. 
I don't even want to pretend it. I can tell you what I've seen in people, but that's about it. Yeah. I also did read that people pleasers might believe that behaving right might cause the cycle to end if they're in a cycle of neglect or abuse or something. They they feel like behaving is might be like the honeymoon phase might continue. I believe that. I believe I I think it's hope. It's like, oh, hopefully. Yeah. And hope is scary. Sometimes hope is very scary. Yes. It's powerful, but it's scary. You know what I mean? And it it can fool you sometimes Mm -hmm. to not accept the reality. Yeah. Yeah. True. I remember I was listening to a podcast once about hope. And they said that that's a really scary drug, hopium. Oh. Like, you know, you hope something so much. So you take, you take the hopium drug, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it really lets you down hard. Yeah. Anyway, for go sure. ahead. What was your... I was going to ask you, so what do you think, What what's the down, what's the negative side of being a people pleaser? Okay. Well, I think stress. I think you're, you're stressed out if you're a people pleaser. Don't you think? Yes. Yes. Very much so. I, I don't think you can be a full out people pleaser and not feel some stress. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, tired. What do you think? Oh yeah. Definitely. You're just tired physically and mentally tired. Like I just can't deal with this anymore. You know? Yes. Yes. I think you neglect your own self. So neglect would be a, a risk and you re- probably re- neglect some of your own relationships. Oh yes. That makes sense. I remember that my husband used to say, why are you doing this for everybody? Why don't you just take care of what you need? And I remember he used to get really frustrated with me. I would say yes to everybody. I would volunteer everywhere. And he would say, well, what are you getting out of this? I'm like, nothing. I'm just helping them. They need my help. And I would give Mm -hmm. a big long speech about why I have to do this. Why somebody else can't show up. Mm -hmm. Do you think people pleasers get something out of it in return? Or is it hope? I think they do get something out of it. So Uh, am I jumping ahead? Should I wait? No, no, this is actually the perfect place. Okay. So there was a case Western did some study and there was some research that shows that people pleasers try to make other people comfortable in their surrounding. And that can lead to overeating for an example. So if you're in a situation where you're trying to make people like you or get along you're going to do the behaviors so that people like you, which is what they get out of it. They get people to like them. Okay. They get people to say, oh my gosh, you know, Leah's so friendly and she's so agreeable. If I ask her, she can help me anytime. And there's, she's always saying yes to me and I love it. So they want people to like them is what you're saying. That's what they're yes. getting out of it. Yes. Mm. So, but, it's that but that's gotta be that something else. About. It's gotta be more too then like that. But then what do you get when you have all these people like you? It, it's just self-esteem. peace. Yeah, yes. self-esteem too. Yes. If you have not really had an identity of who you are, what you are, what you think, but you've been always constantly on to mm-hmm. take care of other people, you're going to keep fulfilling that. And then you get validation from like, great job. That was really good. Mm-hmm. Um. I was hmm. also reading about this. The researchers at, at Radboud University in the Netherlands found that women tend to mimic each other's eating behaviors. And they try to make when, a good... When we're trying to be a people pleaser or just in general? In general. Okay. That, and I thought this was connected, which is why I put it in. But if we're sitting together, I'm going to try to eat like you. So either as slow as you or as fast as you or... Quantity wise, I'm going to try to match your level. Mm -hmm. And that unspoken behavior gives you an indication that you are liked because people report greater liking for those who mimic their behavior. Yeah, because we were always, I was taught that my entire life. It's the, what was it? What's the saying? Um, Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, right? Yes. Yes. Mm. I found that really interesting. interesting. Yeah. And and it's also connected to, now that we're talking about the effects of it, uh, that 
people can start binge eating or overeating as a result. And a binge can be a way to rebel against people pleasing, meeting everyone's needs except for our own. And I also Mm -hmm. found this, I was thinking about this connection. If you cannot set boundaries with other people, maybe you don't know how to set a boundary for yourself. So for example, if you can't say no to somebody else, maybe you don't know how to say no to you and your food. Oh, wow. Mic drop on us right now. Yeah. I was like, wow. And then we use the food to numb ourselves and our anxiety. It's a vicious cycle then. Yeah. Yeah. I also, one more connection, which I just, connecting these pieces was so interesting to me that people who are people pleasers also may suffer from anxiety and depression. Yeah, I can see that. Why do you think so? Because they're drained well, I and mean, they're exhausted. I just, let me just, yeah, all of these risks here. I mean, well, you didn't even say that sometimes if you are a people pleaser, you feel resentment towards other some people. Yes. That's a horrible feeling too. You know what I mean? Like resenting somebody because maybe they're not helpful or they are doing it, but not the way you want, or, you know, I don't know. That's a, just a tough one. Um, Yeah, you're right. You probably do feel more depressed. I think it's moody. Yeah. When you can't express yourself or let all your emotions out because you're going to be yelled at or chastised for it, you just hold back. And mm-hmm. then all of that holding back, it just gets wound up so tightly in your body and it can show up in so many different ways. It can show up as anxiety or it can show up as depression or it can show up as mood swings or whatever people label people put on you. It yeah. Does and then up. we get, then, then you get called crazy. Oh yes. man, she's just crazy. Well, yeah, because I tried to please you this whole, like, you know what I mean? Yes. It's, it's a horrible cycle. Yes. And really I think, is. I think actually sometimes people tend to blow up because they're hold, holding so much in and then mm-hmm. th- that they get that label. Like you just said. Yeah. Or you're acting crazy. Yeah. Because they've been trying to please you and nothing's working or, you know, mm-hmm. interesting. So can yeah. we fix it? Well, there are a few solutions. I found a bunch of different lists. I actually couldn't get enough research. It was so interesting to me. But the first solution, which I think is the best one, is therapy. To find a good Mm -hmm. therapist that you like, who you feel safe with and comfortable with, that you can start saying these things. Um, There's two different kind of solutions. I'm going to go through one quickly and then talk about the other. One is to set boundaries and advocate for your own needs. And that's not as easy as it sounds. Saying yes to things that you want to do. And also this was an interesting one. People who are people pleasers will say yes to an invitation and then make up an excuse not to go later. Really? To say, if you don't want to go from the get, just say, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Like you do with the, I have to go to bed. I can't make it. That's great. Um, But so this- my husband does this. Sorry. <laughs> I'll say yes. And he'll, then he'll come home. And I'm like, we got to go do this. And I'm like, well, why did, why did you say yes? You don't want to yeah. go but like, oh my gosh. So funny. Anyway, go on. Yeah, that's so true. And then they're, they're going to say, I don't want to go. Let's make an excuse. Yeah. So this is the list that I thought was interesting. So if you are fa- facing one of those moments where you're going to be a people pleaser is to first stall. Okay. And say, I need to think about this. If someone is asking you something and it's at 730 to use your example and say, you know what, let me think about this. Mm-hmm. So it gives you time to sort of formulate an answer. Okay. <clears throat> I like that Limit- pause there. Yes. Limit your availability. So to continue with your example, I can do that from six to seven and then I have to go. Mm. Yeah. I only have this window of time. Realize that you have a choice. That's harder than that would be hard. Yes. It, you have a choice to say no. Um, say no with conviction. And I think this is also a hard one. This say, is also, we've said that we've talked about this before with even saying no to like food. If someone offers it to you, mm-hmm. if you say it wishy-washy, you basically didn't say no. Right. 
Because you kind of have some, maybe yeah. I should have some, or maybe I yeah. should do it. Or Oh, no, I don't really want to. Mm -hmm. I really can't. No, I can't. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Don't apologize if it isn't your fault. Oh, that's that goes back to our podcast the other week. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a really important one. Don't be scared of the fallout. So when oh. if people are used to you saying yes, and then suddenly you test the waters out and start saying no, they're going to be upset and they're going to be mad. And I would even venture to say you might lose some friendships because you change. If you are changing and someone is used to you a certain way, they might say, I can't be friends with this person anymore. I can't have them in my life anymore. And you have to be prepared for that fallout. Yeah. But sometimes it's okay to outgrow it. I totally agree. Some people are not good for you. And some people are not adding value to your life. Mm -hmm. And if they that's keep taking really... and it's not a two-way street, that's not good. No. It's a tough, that's tough though. It's tough to come to those terms. Mm -hmm. Or there is a something as just maybe taking a break with some friendships or some circles or, you know what I mean? Like, yes. And then maybe you took a couple of years break and now you're going back to the church group or whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And if you were evolving and the other people are not, maybe it's time to put it on ice. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you finally put it on ice? Well, I think for a long time, I blamed everyone else for my unhappiness. And then, you know, I think as my kids started growing up and I was realizing that I was passing this attitude on to them, that I needed to do so much to make other people happy and I was uh, sacrificing my own happiness, then I just started tentatively, I just tried it out, like saying no to some things or... I would feel guilt, immense guilt after saying no, but I'm like, I'm happy that I said no because I didn't really want to do that thing anyway. Right. And then the more I did it, the better I felt, the more confident I got, the easier it was, but it takes time. I don't think I'm still a hundred percent. Yeah. I would say that you're, I, I would think I would have said you are a slight people pleaser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you From think? where I was? Yes. To yeah. now. Yeah. Like if you said to me right now, um, can you come over? I have this problem. I would say, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> I would but there still may do be that. a difference between that, like helping a friend out. Well, it, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe there isn't. Well, if I don't respect my limits, like I yeah. have to be back home, but I'm still saying yes to you. How can I do both I think things? Yeah, I think you're right. I think it depends though. Like if it's something silly versus something great really huge then yeah yes yeah you still yeah. want to be nice and you still right. want to yeah definitely interesting this okay whole thing i think was yeah i wonder if people pleasers always answer their phone too yeah always answer text <laughs> always answer their phone like i can't tell you how many times i'm like why are we answering your phone right now just let it go. You can call them back. Like, do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I wonder if that's a sign, like a new age sign. Like, well, and now got to answer the phone the, with the iPhone. You can see what the voicemail is as it's happening. So mm -hmm. do they need to pick this up. Is it really important? Can it wait? Yeah. I know so many people that I just go, why are we answering the phone? But maybe they're people pleasers. But you know, on the flip side of that, there was a day where someone called me and I didn't call them back for the whole day. And they're like, are you okay? <laughs> oh, like, really? I just didn't answer your call. So I was like, that was really interesting. But maybe you're a, pe a phone people pleaser. Oh, for maybe sure this person you always, I'm not, I can't tell you how many times people are like, why do you just throw your phone out? You don't ever get back to me. <laughs> throw the damn thing out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it, I think there has to be a happy medium, you know? Yeah, right. You can't be too far too far one way. I think I'm too far one way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're too far one way. I wouldn't agree with no? that. Okay. No. 
All right, good. That makes you feel a little better. I don't think you disregard people's feelings and do whatever you want. I think you're very caring. Yeah, I think so. Okay. But I think you're more confident in your ability to say no. Yeah. Which, uh, uh, what I said in the beginning, it's very enviable. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So do you have a call to action for this week? I'm keeping my call to action. I'm keeping it the same. I really want to stick to my five pound or, or 10 pound on the bar weights and exercise two times this week. Excellent. That's what I'm sticking with. What about you? Okay. I, I think I'm also going to stick with what I'm doing, which is planning my meals out. Um, I haven't written it down yet, but I know in my head what I'm going to be eating. Okay. And also to do the yoga once a week. Okay. I, I really want to see a change. So I'm curious. Once a week probably won't get much of a change, but it'll be slower. I'm okay with that. I think once a week is great. Yeah. I don't well, think I do any, other you, things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I mean, I see what you're saying. Like if your purpose is to get that mobility, you'll get there even from once a week. It'll take longer, but you'll get there. Hopefully. You know? Yeah. yeah. So all right. Can't wait to hear about it. Well, thanks. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye.